Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be going through a video that's been requested in many different flavors over the last few weeks and that was in response to the video on applying for a postdoc position and today what we're going to be doing is actually walking through finding a PI to apply to their lab, what to look for, we're going to look through how to draft up an email, you know, even down to how to put in the correct subject line, drafting the cover letter, where does that go, where does the CV go, we're going to go through all of that today. So if you like this, you know, drop a like below and let's get into this. We'll have a little bit of fun today. What we're going to do is cheat a little bit and we're going to be going back to where I actually did my postdoc, which is at the Joslin Diabetes Center in Harvard Medical School. Um, just because I know that there's somebody there that will fit kind of the criteria of what I'm looking for. But, you know, this is going to apply to anybody. So let's pretend that we're a graduate student that's just wrapping up grad school and we've been studying some metabolism. Maybe we've been doing some in vivo work. Um, we've been injecting mice with different lipids and glucose and we're looking to expand in our knowledge and we want some more molecular aspects. So what we might do is we might open up the internet and we might go to a place like the Joslin, which has research obviously in metabolism, and we might look through some of the different investigators. So you could, you know, take your time going through each one of them. But in this case, I actually know who I want to look at, and that's Ron Kahn. So maybe we've browsed through different people and we eventually stumble upon Ron Kahn. Ron is a great guy. I know him well. Um, so I hope he doesn't mind me using him as an example. I'm sure he doesn't. Um, so Ron, you know, you could look through his stuff and you would see that he is an internationally recognized expert. He's the chief academic officer here at the Joslin. He's authored more than 700 papers and 200 reviews and, and chapters. Like, that's a lot. You know, his emails here, which you could use to, you know, you could click that and then draft up your email. Here's some different things about him, his research interest. So we could read here and see, ah, oh, he's interested in mechanisms of insulin action, insulin signaling, some stuff with adipose tissue, genes and aging. But a lot of, if you read through this, it's a lot of insulin signaling. That's what he's, you know, made his mark on is, is insulin signaling. You could click in and see his, his education, publications, awards. You know, that's great. The next thing that I would normally do is if they didn't actually list out that he had this many papers, you know, this is impressive enough. If you see this, you already know that this person published, but if they didn't have something like that, I might jump on over to PubMed. So we could jump on over here to PubMed and we could search for C. Ronald Kahn, see how many of them pop up here. And only a few hundred popped up probably more that he actually has, obviously, but you know, you could get a, a feel for he published in Nature Reviews, Disease Primers, JCI, Nature, you know, you could go down and see he obviously sell metabolism. He's published in, you know, a lot of great journals. Okay, so I think maybe this is somebody that we might want to look into. The next thing that I would do is I would look to see if this individual has a um, web page or a website for their lab. So let's see if he does. And I know he does because I've actually been on there before, which is one of the reasons why I picked him. But you know, you could pick a different, you know, a different PI and look for theirs. And not everyone's going to have one, but nowadays it seems a lot of people do. So home. So obviously there's different pictures. We could go down to the people here and we could see, you know, Ron a little bit about himself the staff that works there. So he has an administrative assistant. You could go into who the lab manager or managers are. So in this case, his lab's big enough. He has two lab managers. So he's got a pretty good size lab. How many postdocs he has. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So he has 13 postdocs right now. Wow, that is a big lab. And we could look at alumni. Over my 30 years, a major focus has been mentoring. Present, there are usually 12 to 14. Well, we counted 13. That's correct. 150 fellows have trained in my lab. So think about that. 
This is someone that's published in top tier journals that's had 150 fellows and that have started their own labs. There are several of them that actually work in his lab as postdocs and now work at Harvard. So Mary Elizabeth Patty, Rohit Kulkarni, Yuha Sang, um, not Laurie Goodyear, but these three all were postdocs within his lab. Um, and here you could kind of look through what are the people, you know, so Samir, he was a postdoc from 2013 to 19 and now he has a current position at the University of Kentucky and you could scroll through here and see the long, long, long list of people that have been in his lab and what they've done. Research, publications, resources, contact. Um, so, you know, anyways, this is just one specific person. And, you know, this is obviously a stellar PI and not everybody is going to have a stellar, you know, program like he does. But what I want to do is paint a flavor for you of what you should be looking for. These are the things that you should look for. Is this somebody that's researching something in the area I'm interested in? How many postdocs does he have? How many has he had? And what are they currently doing? You know, what kind of papers are they publishing? You know, these are the kinds of things you would want to look for. And if you're not quite as familiar with him, it may be good to go into PubMed, find some of their more recent papers and kind of read through some of those articles and see, you know, what actually are they working on right now? And is this something I'm interested in? So, you know, for the sake of argument, let's just say that he does some molecular work with insulin signaling and I want to learn more about that. So I want to join his lab. So the first thing that I would do is I would open up Microsoft Word and I would begin drafting up what I want to do for a cover letter. Okay, so I would start off Dear Dr. Khan. My name is John Doe and I am currently a fifth year postdoc, no, we're grad students, grad student at the University of Florida Medical School. And let's be more specific, medical schools, Department of Internal Medicine. All right, I don't know that this actually exists. I am just totally making this up. Um, my name is John Doe, I'm a fifth year grad student, okay? I currently work on, what do we work on? We work on whole body metabolism, including how insulin impacts post-bariatric hypoglycemia. All right, so what we're basically doing is saying that, you know, we introduce ourselves, I'm John Doe, that I'm wrapping up grad school basically where I do it and I do it in this department. I currently work on metabolism and I'm focusing on how insulin impacts post-bariatric hypoglycemia. I'm not quite as familiar. I'm guessing there's a hyphen there. Um, so then we could continue on. I, in my literature search for my dissertation, I have come across many of your laboratories publications on insulin signaling. Indeed, one area that I want to continue to explore in my training is the molecular aspects of insulin signaling. Signaling. Since you are a world expert in this area, I have great interest in joining your lab as a postdoc. Okay, 
So now we've set the stage, we've told them kind of, we've kind of gapped it, right? So we're doing this kind of insulin signaling. We're interested in continuing this. You're the expert in this, and that's why I want to join your lab, okay? Now it's time to even hone in more. Let him know you understand what he's about. I know that you have mentored over 150 postdocs through your career, which would no doubt lend itself to, to what's the word that I'm looking for here, would lend itself to vast expertise in training postdocs and helping them reach their career goals. In particular, I want to eventually lead my own investigational group as a PI in a large research institute. And then you could add in a sentence, you know, like I looked on your lab's webpage and I saw that you have people that are, you know, currently faculty at X, Y, and Z Institute, which I find really fascinating, you know, something like that. And then you could add in something like, what I think that I can bring to the table is a unique perspective as someone that has focused on you know, A, B, and C. So whatever it is that you've done that you think could be unique to his lab. I would love the opportunity to sit and discuss, no, we don't wanna use the word sit, that's too informal. I would love the opportunity to discuss my research with you and to hear more details on what I am sure are the exciting research projects ongoing in your lab. Sincerely, John Doe, okay? And that is how you would draft your cover letter, something like this. Now, there's two options that you could have with your cover letter. You can either have your cover letter like this, in which case what you would do is you would draft an email that would say something like, Dear Dr. Khan, my name is John Doe, and I am interested in joining your lab as a postdoc. Please, please find attached to this email a copy of my cover letter and CV. I look forward to hearing from you. Best regards, John Doe. Something like that. And then you would attach a Word document with this cover letter and your CV. Okay. The other option is you can make the cover letter sort of the body of your email. So your email would say, Dear Dr. Khan, you would have this. And then at the end of this paragraph here, I would add something like, please find attached to this email a copy of my CV, just to make sure that he knows that your CV is attached. And then, you know, I'd love the opportunity to discuss. Sincerely, John Doe. And in terms of what you would actually do for the the actual like subject line, I would put something along the lines of, you know, postdoc position inquiry or application for postdoc position or interested in joining your lab. Um, something like this. It doesn't, the subject line isn't the most important part. What's actually in the body of the email is most important. But what I really kind of want to get across is that you could tell that in this body of the email here, outside of a few lines, 
most everything is going to be specific to that individual that I'm applying for. So obviously your name and where you're studying that, you know, you want to be a faculty member, like these are things that aren't going to change, but the majority of what you're actually writing is something geared towards them. So if you're able to take the same paragraph and swap out the person's name with somebody else and just send mass emails to somebody, then you haven't written a good cover letter. Your cover letter should be able to be specific to each person. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers it. So just to wrap up and kind of rephrase the things that we went over today, the first thing that you're going to want to do is, you know, even just starting by picking out different schools that maybe you're interested in and searching for faculty there, or by thinking about people that you've been citing in your dissertation research. You know, there, there should be names of people that you can think of by this point in your graduate school where you're thinking to yourself, yes, I think I might want to do a postdoc there. From there, you should start looking up things about that person. You should look to see if they have a lab page or if they're listed on their department page. You should start trying to look through their PubMed and seeing what other publications they have, familiarizing yourself with all of this. Then what you want to do once you're there is start drafting your letter. And this needs to be specific to each person. And I know that as you're applying, you do 20 applications. I don't know how many you're going to do, but say you did 20, you know, I get it that it starts becoming repetitive and it starts becoming difficult to craft individualized letters to each person, but it's going to go a long way. And then from there, you just need to upload your cover letter and your CV. And again, we haven't really touched upon doing a scientific CV. So if that's something you want, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to do one of those. But with that, I think this video has already gone really long over 17 minutes. So I think we should bring it to an end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.